Hey guys, as you may know, you can stick a galvanized nail and a penny into a potato or into a lemon, and it'll actually produce an electrical current. As you can see with the potato, we get about 0.96 volts, whereas in the lemon, we get about 0.88 volts. But why is this? Now I can just say that the potato is a better solution for the current to flow through, and this would be correct. But if we dive down a bit deeper, we can see that there's a whole lot more to this. But first, we need to understand the basics of electrochemistry, that is chemical reactions that create electricity, which is exactly what is going on. Now in our case, electricity is the movement of electrons. So if electrons are moving between two objects through a wire, then that wire has an electrical current. And if the difference in charge between those two objects is higher, then the current will have a higher voltage, and thus a greater flow of electrons. Now, in the case of static electricity, friction creates this difference in charge. But in our case, chemical reactions create that difference. With the potato or lemon batteries, the zinc that coats the outside of the galvanized nail wants to give electrons to the copper that coats the outside of the penny. Now since the zinc gives away electrons, it's known as the anode. And since the copper gains electrons, it is known as the cathode. And the flow of electrons between the anode and the cathode creates an electrical current. And how strongly an anode or cathode wants to get rid of or gain electrons is known as its standard reduction potential. And by looking at this chart, we can calculate the current by finding the difference in standard reduction potentials between the anode and the cathode. So according to this chart, zinc has a negative 0.76 volt potential, and copper has a positive 0.34 volt potential, meaning that they should have a current of around 1.1 volts, which you can see is more or less what we get. And if we use magnesium, which is an even better anode and has a standard potential of negative 0.37 volts, then we should get about 3.7 volts. And as we can see, we get a higher voltage, but it's nowhere near 2.7 volts. And that is because we're missing out on one very important thing in electrochemistry, and that is the electrolyte. Electrons don't really just jump from an anode to a cathode. They do it through a medium, and this medium is known as the electrolyte. And this electrolyte is necessary for the chemical reaction. You see, electrolytes contain ions, which are atoms with a positive or negative charge from losing or gaining electrons. And in this case, positively charged hydrogen ions from the electrolyte steal electrons from the copper, creating hydrogen gas, which we can see as those little tiny bubbles. The zinc then dissolves in the electrolyte, leaving a positively charged zinc ion, and more importantly, two extra electrons. The extra electrons from the zinc then flow over to the copper in a wire, and this is what creates that electrical current. In addition to this, the now negatively charged cathode attracts those positively charged zinc ions that are just floating around. And if we leave the anode and cathode in for long enough, we see that the anode starts to shrink and the cathode starts to grow. Now, in this reaction, energy comes from the zinc atoms dissolving into the electrolyte. This energy is then converted into electrical energy. So if the electrolyte, which is the potato or the lemon, does not provide energy for the reaction, and we're using the same exact anode and cathode, then why do we get different voltages? Well, many sources, <clears throat> Wikipedia, say that the voltage depends on the acidity of the electrolyte, which makes sense, as the definition of an acid is a substance that gives off hydrogen plus ions. So the more hydrogen plus ions, the more reactions take place, generating more electrical current, and thus more voltage. However, there is a problem with this. The lemon has a pH of about 2, and has a lower voltage than the potato with a pH of 5. So what is going on? Well, it turns out that the statement, the lower the pH, the more hydrogen plus ions, is not really accurate. How good an electrolyte is really depends on the total number of ions. So when something is more acidic and has a lower pH, that just means that more of that acid will turn into ions. So a strong acid, like hydrochloric acid, will turn 100% into ions, whereas a weak acid, like vinegar, will only partially turn into ions. But there's one more thing we need to consider, 
the Van Hoff factor. The Van Hoff factor is essentially how many particles an acid turns into. So something that is not an electrolyte and thus does not turn into ions has a VHF of 1. So sugar in solution is still just one sugar molecule. But if we look at the strong hydrochloric acid, we see that HCl turns into H plus and Cl negative, giving it a VHF of 2. Since hydrochloric acid is strong, it will always separate into two ions. But for weaker acids, this is not the case. The two acids we care about are phosphoric acid found in potatoes and citric acid found in lemons. For these weaker acids, the VHF depends on the pH, with a lower pH resulting in a lower VHF. So after we do some very, very tedious math, we calculate the VHF of citric and phosphoric acids and get this lovely chart. We see that citric acid with a pH of 2 has a VHF of only 1.05, whereas phosphoric acid with a pH of 5 has a VHF of 2. So while the lemon may have more of its citric acid turning into ions, on average only 1.05 ions will be made. And while less of the phosphoric acid will turn into ions, you'll get two for every phosphoric acid molecule. Ultimately, leaving more ions in the potato, allowing for a bigger chemical reaction, creating a greater flow of electricity. So who would have known that a simple elementary science project could add so much to it? I certainly know I didn't. Now this video was made as part of a potato collaboration with a bunch of other great educational YouTube channels. So if you'd like to learn way more about potatoes than you ever wanted to know, then go check it out. There's a link to the other videos in the description. And thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed creating this video, then please leave a like or subscribe. Thanks.